Oh, we got something special today. This is the brand new Lords of Hellas from Awakened Realms. Hasn't yet hit Kickstarter, but will be coming soon. Fantastic off the charts miniatures quality and gameplay. So without further ado, let's get into the component review of Lords of Hellas. To mess with Zeus, you get the whipped in the face. Oh, that's not a bird. It is a Pegasus. I am the Minotaur. No, I am the Minotaur. Hey, this is the McGuire Review, and today we do have a treat for us. Yes! Oh man, look at this. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is a brand new one from Awakened Realms. It's called Lords of Hellas. Now, it's not out yet, and they are going to be doing a Kickstarter coming up soon. Right now, they are tentatively targeting for the end of May, early June. So, definitely go check this out. They've got it on their Facebook page. It's out there on social media. They've got kind of one of those uh, draft Kickstarter pages you can go and you can look at, get some information for the game some information on the miniatures, things like that. So you definitely want to go check it out because this thing is unbelievable, as you can see. Now, I will say as we go through this component review, and that's what this is going to be, I'm going to do a two-part series on this one just due to its epic scale and awesome gameplay. And I want to give the gameplay enough attention to be able to understand kind of how the mechanics of the game flows uh, as you play the game. All right, I'm going to do it. Here we go, guys. I'm going to do it. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to give this away. I am going to give it away. I'm going to give it to you guys. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to run a giveaway on this. We are going to start this one today, okay? One day after Tabletop Day 2017. Yes! We are running this starting today. And it will run until the end of the Kickstarter. So the day the Kickstarter on this ends that's when we will choose one lucky subscriber and again that's how you get entered in the contest you got to be a subscriber of the channel if you want to go like the facebook page follow me on twitter or instagram you can do that it's not necessary to be in the running but you do have to be a subscriber of the channel if you like board games you like board game reviews stuff like that why not subscribe anyway? You'll get to see more cool board games, but if you're just interested in this game, you need to subscribe to the channel to be able to be entered in the giveaway. I will send you this game for free, shipping included, and it is open to anyone in the world. So hit that subscribe button and get in on this competition. You're gonna get all this fantastic stuff right before anybody else would, and remember the timing on that when this Kickstarter ends. Literally that week, I'm going to be sending you this game, which means you're going to have it months and months and months and months and months before anyone else will get their hands on this game. You're going to be able to play it with your friends. You're going to be the only person that's going to have this because I know for a fact they did not create a lot of these early review prototype versions of the game. So you will be in a very, very small pool of people that actually have this game out there today so you're really going to want to get in on this trust me and i can't believe i'm doing this because i want to play the game so pretty much i'm going to be playing this game as much as i possibly can between now and i give it to one of you you will also get the special limited edition box stay tuned in and i will show you what this little button does later i don't know if you've noticed it but there is a little button that is on this box and it does do something pretty cool that uh, you will not get anywhere else. So that is one absolutely limited special edition uh, of this outside of the fact of getting the resin miniatures with kind of the hand painted uh, paint job that you've got here. It is just a black and white base, but it still looks really cool the way that they did it. And it brings out all the detail. You'll see that here later when we get in on these miniatures a little bit closer, but stay tuned to see what this little button here does. And uh, I think you're going to think that's pretty cool as well. I'll push it, Zeus! I'll push the button! I'm going to do a little talking about what we have here on the table. And then we're going to bring the camera over and we're going to get down close on some of this stuff. Because I just think you guys are going to be blown away by the actual miniature quality. Now, Awakened Realms is known in the market for superior miniature sculpts 
and painting as well coming out of their shop. So this stuff is just unbelievable. I will tell you that, uh, again, this is a prototype early copy, but you know it's fairly close uh, to what you're going to get after the Kickstarter. There will be some new things that are going to be added, some new mechanics, some various gameplay. They're going to actually make this a one to four player game. I repeat that, one to four player game. So you will be able to solo this bad boy and I am overly excited about what that's going to look like. But I will tell you, the quality on these miniatures is just off the charts. Now, the ones that you get in the prototype version, uh, these are actually resin. Now, your final miniatures are going to be a plastic-based miniature. They did include this little guy right here in this little box. Uh, and it was a version of the Minotaur. And you can see here, and this isn't uh, scale-wise the final product. The, the final product scale-wise will be as big as this guy here, this Minotaur. But it shows you just the difference of, you know, the resin versus the plastic. And they also are going to do a really cool paint job on the miniatures in the game uh, that I believe will be an upgrade, but it'd be a very, very small dollar upgrade. I mean, it literally will be nominal in, in what you're kind of getting here. For the value, and I'm talking super small extra money to be able to get the sort of the paint job that you see here. And it's called their new sun drop technology. Uh, and basically what it gives you is a nice black base with the white highlight. And then it looks like it kind of comes back over with maybe like a glossy black uh, wash. So it kind of allows the miniatures right out of the box to have that full quality uh, view that you would get if you were to paint it. But if you're not a painter, and even if you don't want to do uh, washing or dry brushing or just basing, if that's just not your thing, you're going to be able to get this game looking fantastic right out of the box. So that was really exciting for me when I heard that they were going to do that. And I was blown away when I got this prototype version of the game and saw that they put as much into it as they did. Uh, you know, kind of painting uh, all of these sculpts with the white and black sort of base. And it looks really cool. Uh, and then you'll see over here all the troops for the four players. You've got kind of a goldish color, green. It's like an orangish red and a blue. Uh, and all of those are painted as well, so it's very easy to see. Now, I will say, outside of the priests, when you look at these sculpts, which kind of makes up the units in the game for each player... The priests all have the same uh, look. And again, we're going to bring the camera over. We're going to get down close to this stuff. Uh, but the priests are all sort of on their knees, kind of reaching up, sort of, you know, you know, praying. Those all look the same. But the actual units, the soldiers, they have a different sculpt. Now, they are the same within their, you know, their unit. Each one of the player's units have a completely different look and different sculpt. Which is another nice touch that I really liked. I thought that was really cool. And it makes the game feel a little richer, a little more unique, if you choose a different player, a different character in the game. So what we'll do here is let's just start uh, right over here, and we'll kind of work our way around the table. So what you'll find in the game, as of right now, with this prototype version, is there are four cards, one for each player, and this is basically the player turn. It's some really cool artwork on the back, the Lords of Hellas there, you can see, same as what's on the, the cover of the box. And on the front, you'll have the player turn. So it will list right out exactly what you're going to do on your turn. Um, it, so it says right here, so you move your army, send a priest under monument, move hero. There's special actions that you can take on your turn. And all that's listed out right there. And they even put some visuals on there to kind of help you understand what you're supposed to do. So that's nice. I always like it when games include those reference cards. And I will say another thing that I'm starting to see in the rule set as I'm, as I'm pl actually playing the game is that although games like this generally look fairly complex, when you got a ton of high sculpted miniatures on the board, you got a lot of different things you can do as a player, I found that the game plays out pretty smooth. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense. It's just kind of a logical way that you go through and you interact. Now, there are a few rules here and there based on when you fight or when you interact. Some different things could happen, but overall, the mechanics and the gameplay are really smooth. Uh, and, and I'm impressed by that because you can really get convoluted in games like this. So I'm glad to see that they approached it from that game design. So the next thing that we're going to look at here is another card each one of the players will get. On the back, you're going to see what your three heroes in the game, and I'll call these uh, our gods or our heroes, and that's Zeus, and we do have Hermes and Athena. 
So these are the larger monuments that are in the game, and they have a little spot right here in front. They have two spots. So each one has two spots right in front, and that's really for these little priests. So uh, one thing that you'll find, which is neat about this game as well, is these little sculpts do fit inside of some of these various different things. So the priests, you know, they fit right inside of these guys, so you can get two sort of praying to that, and then you know, gain uh, favor from that god, and then what's going to happen is once you gain favor, it'll show you right here the various different blessings and things that that god can do. And the other thing that's cool is there's actually a deck of cards, and uh, I have them actually sitting right with each one of the overall monuments. And you're going to be able to draw blessings from that deck as you're playing the game. So it's just another way to gain some extra effects, some extra stuff, uh, if you're able to gain favor of those monuments. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then on the front here, it's going to list out the hunt. So that's a various uh, actions that you're going to take when you're playing the game. Again, we'll get into that when we do the gameplay review in the video to show you exactly how you're going to use this card. But the point being, just another reference card for you as a player to have in front of you to help right when you start to play the game from the very beginning. Now, here are the four players that you can be. Uh, again, excellent sculpts on these, and I will list out your player sculpts are 28 millimeter. Your larger monster, like these guys, like the Minotaur. Um, there's a uh, uh, where's my uh, Medusa? Here's Medusa. Uh, th this one is awesome. This is a phenomenal sculpt. This Medusa is just unbelievable. So uh, these are 70 millimeter, and these big guys here are 121 millimeter. So that's just to kind of give you a feel. I, I know sometimes on camera you can't 100% sort of tell really how big it is scale-wise, uh, but these are these big guys are 121 millimeters. So that you know it gives you kind of a feel for how big these sculpts are in the game, uh, which makes the game feel so much more epic as you play. It's a lot of fun. I love games that come with these larger these larger sculpts here. So you got four characters. Here's the first one. Here's a guy kind of riding uh, sort of a Pegasus there. And we'll set that down here. Here's the uh, second one. And each one of these sculpts are amazing. Again, we're going to bring the camera down here uh, and show. This guy's pretty cool. He's got some awesome armor on him. And then here's a final guy that looks sort of like a, uh, you know, a Spartan. He's in like some really cool armor, all dressed up. And then you've got each one of the player boards for the characters here. So uh, you can see the Pegasus is Perseus, right? So you got him here. Uh, Achilles, right? You got Helena. And you got Hercules. I will say they are sort of an artistic uh, render of what each one of those uh, ancient uh, Greek gods would be or how they would be reflected. And I like that as well. They kind of took their own spin on it from a sculpt perspective. So what we'll do here is we'll just look at Perseus's board. And there's quite a few things you're going to be able to do. You'll see here you've got some special abilities that are listed here on the top. There's leadership, strength, and speed. So there's a little chit here, and I'll show this. just a little tiny uh, kind of triangular-shaped chit. And you'll put that right over uh, kind of where you start in the game. And it will list if you get to start with you know, more than one of any one of these attributes, it will list that right on your card here, and that will be specific and special to that particular character. And you'll be able to set that, and you'll be able to upgrade that throughout the gameplay. Uh, and you can kind of customize your character, which is another fun thing, right? Do you build them out to have lots of leadership and slow speed and maybe lots of strength or, you know, lots of strength, half leadership, no speed? So there's lots of different ways you can customize just the character that you have in the game, and those do play out dramatically different based on how you customize these things. Another nice thing with this card is it will list out all of the special actions that you can take, and those are right here on the bottom. You can see that each character does have a specific amount of special actions they'll be able to do in the game as well. That just adds one more layer of kind of customization to each one of the characters. So we'll move on. There is one die here that's included in the game. Now, this is just sort of wrapped in a um, in a, in a paper material uh, for the prototype. I'm not sure exactly what the final die will look like. I don't know if it'll be laser cut or if it'll be painted or it'll be sticker. Uh, I'm not really sure about that. But uh, here is the one die that's included in the game that you will use on your turn. Here we have a card for each one of the 70 millimeter monsters that you're going to battle in the game. So, yes, yeah, Sphinx, Hydra, Minotaur, Medusa, Cyclops, uh, Chimera, 
and, and Cerebus. So Cerebus is, uh, where's Cerebus here? Uh, here's Cerebus right here. This three-headed dog with the chains. He's pretty awesome. Put him back. So we'll just go ahead and look at Cerebus's card, and you'll see that they do have a special attack, a region attack, and a reward. So when these monsters come out on the board, and they will be triggered and they will come out on the board through our event decks when we get into gameplay. And all of this isn't going to be out here like this when we're playing the game. Uh, it'll look very different. You know, cities will come out, uh, towers, these towers here we got will come out, uh, the various monsters, the monuments, things like that will sort of build over time and come out as you're playing the game. Uh, just kind of have everything out in front of us so we can have a good look of it. So what we'll find here, special attack, region attack. So this is pretty cool. Each one of these monsters have a special attack, but they also have a region attack. And then once you defeat the monster, and it's really cool, you can see here there's there's these different um, boxes on the monster with little icons. So to be able to defeat you know each one of the monsters, you sort of have to... Um, it, it isn't just kind of a one-hit, one-kill, or one battle. You sort of have to take it out by taking out various aspects on that monster. So you hit a head or you hit a leg. Another mechanic that I really like when you're battling the monsters, it makes that monster interaction feel that much more epic. And then you get a reward and it's listed right down here at the bottom. So if you were to take out this monster, you as a player would then get a particular reward uh, that only you would have. So if we move on here, we've got these little X's and these are just the little, little you know, chits that you're going to be able to use to put right there to X out. Oh, I've hit you know, the arm or the leg or whatever. That's what you're going to use these for. There is a small stack of chits here. They have sort of a little uh, wreath on them and they have a specific color. And on the back of these, they actually show you, and this is really little, but on the back of these, they actually have the map drawn out with all the different uh, regions on the map. And it kind of highlights, you know, what particular region this will give you, this glory will give you if you're able to get one of these. We'll explain that again as we go through gameplay, how those are used. Now, another component of this game that I like is you may look at this and you may say, you know what, this feels like a complete area control game. Uh, and it is, okay? It, it is an area control game, but you're also going to be doing things like building up and customizing your character, which I love. It isn't just a everybody has a character and it's all about area control and it's all about maybe just the cards you have in your hand. This really is more about defining your character, building up your character, customizing your character, controlling areas on the map, and going on quests. So whenever they add quests into games like this, I'm all in. And that's what this front area right here is. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight quests that are included in this prototype. And what will happen is as you start the game, so we'll jump down here and we'll jump back. We've got the event deck. You're going to use that events deck. You're going to flip eight of them, start the game, kind of populate the board. And as you play, you're going to flip these events. Well, basically on these events, and I'll, I'll turn a couple of them here. So Amazon Invasion, Blood Sacrifice. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, uh, rescue. Um, what else we got? Olympic Games. And it will tell you right on the card, uh, right down here, exactly what you need to do with those. So some of those may be quests that you'll go on and you'll start. And if you flip one over, you can get a quest. You'll grab that quest and then you'll look at the card and tell you where the quest goes. You'll put that on the map and then you'll get there, right? And you have to start to complete that quest. Well, when you do quests, you, you'll take that card and let me find one here. Um, find a quest. So here's the monsters you got in here. Um, let's find the quest. I have not shuffled these. So... Here's a quest here called the Amazon Queen. So if you take the Amazon Queen, let's say you were to pull that quest, you'd put that right on the board. Uh, let's say if this first area, this is where the quests go, and there are three. Uh, and that one, you know, just happens to be open because I don't have quests anywhere else. And there's three little circles next to that quest. You'll actually take your uh, player, and let's say I was uh, Perseus here. You would take that and you would put it right at the top. And there's three little things on the side of the card that actually tell you what you need to do to complete that quest. And they're just right here. There's one, two, three, three little items that you have to acquire. So the first one says leadership of two. Second one says leadership of two, two hoplites. And the third one says leadership of two, destroy two hoplites. So as you do those things, you will move along this track right here. So one, two, three. And then once you complete the third one, you now have completed that, that quest. Then you can claim that quest, the Amazon Queen. Uh, well, that's cool. It, acts, it happened to be the exact one that I chose. Okay, that was awesome. 
So uh, you would beat the Amazon Queen, and then it would tell you what your reward was. So if I was to be able to beat that quest, the Amazon Queen, I would add one to my strength and draw two combat cards. So uh, combat cards are right here. So this is the combat deck you're going to draw from. Here's a little spot to discard. Here's the monster deck. So when you fight monsters, they're going to be able to draw cards from this deck right here. So that's how the quests would work, and they would come from the events. So in this game, you know, events aren't necessarily just these uh, overarching things that are happening in the environment. Uh, they are things that drive monster combat, pulling monsters out on the board. They drive quest acquisition and, and deployment. All of that stuff is going to be driven by this deck of events. Now, so that's how the quests work. And I'm going to jump right down here and show you that there are also artifacts that are in this game. So a lot of the rewards and various things that will happen in the game as well as uh, things that can happen by drops of various you know, monsters. So Medusa, for instance, has something in here. It's called the Blood of Medusa. And I'll just read it here. And they've got some really cool artwork on them, these little artifacts. These are the smaller cards here that you can acquire. So this one says, after a battle, you may choose to put any number of destroyed hoplites on this card. Hoplites, your little guys here. Use to put all the hoplites on this card on one region under your control. So that's an example of like what that will do. Here's another one, Eye of Cyclops. Add a priest to your priest pool. Use only if your hero is in a region with a built temple. So there's just various things you can do with these artifacts as you acquire them. So that's neat that you can get that in the game as well. That's another component that I really like that I can acquire these really cool sort of epic items to add to my character as I'm playing the game. And then let's jump right over here to our final set of components because we've kind of hit everything else. Now there will be a few bags here and I'll show they have you know various different colors. These are essentially uh, components to to mark things called control points. So you know if I was the blue player, I would have the bag of blue uh, wooden uh, tokens here, and, th and that's what they are. They're little wooden tokens, and you would place those on various regions to show that you had gained control of that area. And that's the only thing that those are going to be used for in the course of gameplay. Okay, it's almost time to get the camera and bring it down to the table so we can take a really close look at these miniatures and some of the components of the game. There will be pictures at the very end, like we always do. This is the box that comes with the game, uh, or, or the, the, the version of the prototype box that, that I got with this set here. Uh, again, Awakened Realms, Lord of Hellas. You can see that box. It does have a really nice artwork all the way around. Now, on the back, mine does just say prototype. Uh, once the game is complete production version, you obviously have you some nice artwork on the back with probably a picture of the game. Now, the reason why I want to call this out, and you may have noticed already, is my box came for some reason with this little button on it. This little red button. So I get it out of the box, I'm like, why is there a button glued to the front of the box? So I open it up, and I find all this wiring on the back side of it. And I'm like, good lord, what is this? So there's a spot for three AA batteries, which I put three AA batteries in. And then I will show you this. When you push the button, the box lights up. How freaking cool is that? I mean, are you kidding me? This is just something cool that they did uh, for the prototype review copy. But I mean, how awesome is that? It's like this bluish purple light here in the eyes of the Lords of Hellas. And then they lit up the... Uh, the actual suit of uh, of Zeus here, and they put the lights on that. So that is just so, so cool. You know, thank you guys for doing that. This is such an awesome little extra treat uh, to make this version of the game uh, super custom. And remember, uh, this is the resin version of these miniatures as well, outside of this one minotaur. So that is sort of a limited run, as well as each one of these are, you know, kind of custom, and I believe hand uh, sprayed and painted so you got that as well so it does make this prototype set a very special cut a very special set of this game and again why is it so special because we're going to be doing that epic level epic level giveaway now we will be talking more about the giveaway in the next video when we do the gameplay so definitely subscribe Definitely check in so you'll get the notification, ring the bell, 
so you'll know when that one hits. Now, you may think I'm crazy for doing that, and I do think that I am crazy for doing this because this is a really limited special copy of this particular game. And I think that once this game hits, it's going to blow up. It's going to do really, really well. Uh, and I would have this. But you know what? I want to give back to the subscribers. I really love the fact that you guys are loyal. You subscribe to the channel. And I love to give these giveaways. And I think this is a great one to be able to give back to you guys. And one lucky subscriber will get this version of the game, the Maguire Reviews prototype version of Lords of Hellas. All right, let's bring it in and get the detail of all of this miniature bliss okay so let's start to take a look at some of these miniatures here so what we'll do here is let's kind of get in on this uh this city here that's the first thing we'll take a look at so you can see there the quality of that little city and that little area there in the middle that's right where one of your little hoplites are going to sit so i'll grab one of the uh golden players here and they're pretty cool i'll show you they've got kind of a, a little shield with a, uh, a spear and you can see all the detail let me get up close here on it get it to focus in all the detail that you'll get even behind that shield and into that into that miniature into that sculpt so really nice and that's where that's going to fit is you'll be able to put that right inside of those cities to kind of gain region control so that's why those are sculpted like that we'll put that hoplite back thank you mr hoplite so you can see there look at that that's awesome. And that's just one of the cities. So let's go here and look at one of the towers. So I'll bring this back here. Here's one of our towers. Take a look at that. You can see the quality on that. Now let's go right over here and look at one of our larger cities. I believe they call this one now. Uh, this is uh, Spartacus. Spartaca. <laughs> look at that. Look how cool that is. Unbelievable. Look at the detail just in those pillars in that sculpt. Could you imagine that painted up? Unbelievable. Let's take a quick look at each one of the heroes. So I'm going to set those out right here. Right there is our Hercules. Unbelievable. Look at how great those look. I love this one here. What what an amount of detail in this sculpt. Look at her hair, her face. Just amazing. Look at that Pegasus. Look at the wings on that. This is just unbelievable, isn't it, guys? I mean, it just and it just keeps getting better and better. So let's take a look at our 70 millimeter here. This is the Minotaur. Let's get right up on this guy. He's got a great level of detail. Look at the, it's kind of a mechanical version of the Minotaur. That that arm there is sort of a mechanical version. Look at that uh, that piping. Unbelievable. Let's take a look here at a few more of these 70 millimeter monsters. Look at this one. That's just great. This is really cool. Look at that. Unbelievable. Let's grab Medusa. Medusa is one of my favorite here, and I'll show you why. The sculpt on this one just has so much feel to it. I don't know how to describe it, but it just it it really captures Medusa. I think you know you can see sort of the the tail almost has somewhat of a mechanical sort of feel to it because again they really took their own sort of spin on the sculpt on these. She looks amazing. And you can see there she has, you know, one of the hoplites sort of in her grip, looking down onto him. Each one of her snakes there coming out of the top. 
unbelievable. She may be my favorite sculpt just because of you know the dynamic pose they really put into that one in particular is amazing. Let's look at one more here. You can see each one of those heads being sculpted completely different. With that big claw tail, just unbelievable. And remember guys, this isn't even final quality. This is not production quality. This is prototype resin. It just shows you what you're going to get with this game. Quality is just unbelievable. And again, you know, here's a good example. You know, this right here is Cyclops. So it gives you a good feel for, you know, how they artistically molded and sculpted and created these various different, you know, ancient mythological gods and monsters. They really gave it a different feel uh, but still has that sort of original Greek, you know, feel to it. So let's get in here on Zeus. Zeus is an awesome piece. You can see this huge sort of fire lightning whip that they've given him. And the reason why you see these, you know, these cracks here in this particular one, you'll see that on all the monuments, is because they're actually kind of built. They're not glued together. They're separate pieces uh, just kind of stacked together here and you kind of build those monuments. So that's why that looks like that. Let me kind of spin this and I'll get and see kind of the front here. And you can see all the detail on his outfit there, that whip sort of coming all the way down and wrapping around the sculpt. And then again, those little areas for the priests to sit. Let's hit up Athena here. She looks great. See that spear. Look at the muscle tone. I'm going to show you really quick what each one of these hoplites look like for each one of the characters. So I'm going to grab those as you continue to kind of take a look at what we got here on the board. So here's each one of those hoplites, and you can see that each one is specifically different for each character. And I will have to say that this one right here is my favorite, the green that holds sort of this uh, very mechanical-like bow, kind of has the uh, the arm sort of sort of cocked back, ready to ready to fire. Really cool looking, kind of futuristic almost, you know, head garment on, and there's some some type of, uh, you know, mechanical type backpack that, that the guy's wearing. So that that's probably my favorite one. But they do all look completely different. And again, that adds a really nice feel to the game as you're playing. That you don't just get the customization of the character you're playing and all the special abilities and the various, you know, leadership speed and strength that you can customize. You also get each one of the different sculpts. So that adds to replayability quite a bit as you play this game. Even if you choose the same character with the same sculpt, there's a lot of different changing that you can do throughout the course of the game to give it a very different feel and a different play style. So I really like that. Uh, again, uh, very, very awesome. And you can see these sculpts are just unbelievable. They're off the charts from a quality perspective. I just can't say enough on how awesome these things are. I know I'm just sort of... Uh, geeking out on it, but you know I'm I'm a big fan when games uh, put a lot into the sculpts and the components of a game because it just makes it that much more of a rich experience as you're playing. Uh, Verse, you know, making a great game, but then the components, uh, you know, the components are no good, right? Where you know you get sort of the best of both worlds with this game, where you get great components. Well, I mean, fantastic components. And you get a good game on top of it. So here's Hermes here. Here's our last uh, monument. We'll take a look. They did a great job on this one too. I really like the uh, 
the artistic style that they went with was sort of the mechanical running legs. The little wings there that they added at the bottom, those look really cool. I really like the way they did his uh, his mask. It's got some great detail on it. The feather at the top has some great detail. And just the whole posing, the dynamic pose that they put this particular uh, monument into just looks great with that running kind of pose. So it's not just the detail and the quality of each one of these miniatures. It's the dynamic posing that they created with the sculpts that makes it so good. Let's take a close look at this one. And, and, and this will be the last one that we'll look at here. Look at that. Look at those teeth. Each one of those heads. I can't imagine how amazing that'll look painted up. Unbelievable. You know, I, I'm going to have to go out on a limb here and probably say... Of any game I've ever reviewed or played, now I can't say any game in existence because, again, I haven't played and or reviewed every game in existence, but I will say of any game I've ever played or reviewed, this one by far has the most dynamic, best sculpts I've seen in a game. Unbelievable. Just amazing. So there you go. There is a full component overview of Lords of Hellas from Awakened Realms. I cannot wait for this one. You can see the excitement. You can see the quality of this game. This is going to be awesome, guys. Look forward to that Kickstarter and get in on the giveaway on this special limited edition version of the game. So hit that like, click the subscribe below to join the team, ring the bell. This has been the Maguire Review, and we'll see you next time.